Hello, and welcome to the 2017 Progress Report in Pursuit of a Better Payment System webinar. My name is Marissa Parker with the Federal Reserve Bank of Chicago. Today, our presenter is Dan Gonzalez, Vice President of the Industry Relations Program at the Federal Reserve Bank of Chicago. As a reminder, you have received an email with the webinar link. Please click on that link so you can access the webinar. Within there, you will be able to access downloading materials as well as asking a question. If you have any issues, feel free to email our email box, which is fedpaymentsimprovement.chi.frb.org. As a reminder, we will pause throughout the webinar to ask any questions to Dan. If you have any other um, issues, again, feel free to email us. Dan, are you on the line? I'm here, Marissa. Okay, I will turn it over to you. The floor is yours. Great. Thanks, Marissa, and good morning, everyone. It's really a pleasure to be here to be able to give you an update, as Marissa noted, uh, you know, really the 2017 progress report on all the work, uh, all the good work that has been done in pursuit of a better payment system. Um, as many of you uh, would recall, in January of 2015, the Federal Reserve released the strategies for improving the U.S. payment system, which is an ambitious multi-year plan that really focused on making improvements in the U.S. payment system from end to end. Um, the goal uh, overall was really to enhance the U.S. payment system to meet changing demands of U.S. consumers as well as businesses. Uh, during today's uh, progress report, we're going to outline some of the important work that's been completed to date, um, as well as highlight uh, some of the upcoming next steps uh, really tied to all five strategies that were laid out within that paper. So moving on to slide number two, we actually highlight here for you um, what those strategies are and, and really how they're tied to the desired outcomes that were laid out within the paper. Um, so within the paper itself, it, it laid out a vision for um, how we're looking to improve the U.S. payment system. Um, and that vision laid out uh, improvements or desired outcomes around payment speed, looking at specific cases where um, today payment speed doesn't really meet the needs of the end users, so be it consumers and or businesses. Um, looking at payment security, obviously that's a big issue anytime you hear about uh, data breaches, fraud attempts, anything going on with payment security, really uh, an evolving payment security landscape and trying to keep up with some of those challenges. Um, next was efficiency, um, looking at ways to ensure that uh, we are taking all the steps necessary to improve payment efficiency. So while we do have a very efficient U.S. payment system, um, there were opportunities noted where some payment improvements um, could be made around the e efficiency category. Um, next was international, so looking at international components as as payments become more global um, and, and commerce continues to expand globally, um, looking at some of the challenges there and making payments um, internationally to ensure that um, commerce can continue from an efficient international standpoint. And then finally, co collaboration, looking at how, as an industry, we can make these improvements together and, and really advance some of these changes. Um, so in, in pursuit of those desired outcomes, um, within the paper, we laid out uh, a number of strategies, so five to be specific. Um, first, around stakeholder engagement, how we were going to work with the industry to, to advance some of these changes. Um, next was a specific strategy tied to uh, payment speed, so looking to advance uh, faster payments uh, within the U.S. marketplace. Uh, next was a payment security strategy. Um, focusing on how we're going to make some of those improvements around ensuring that uh, payments are safe and secure from an ongoing perspective uh, within the U.S. marketplace. Next was uh, payment efficiency, looking at steps that could be taken to um, enhance the, the efficiency of certain payments. Uh, if you recall uh, some of the payment studies that we have done in the past, uh, we noted where uh, there's a, a, a large segment of business-to-business -business payments that are still done either via check or through manual means, um, looking at ways to potentially enhance that and, and focus more on electronic means. Um, and then finally, enhancing Federal Reserve uh, services, 
Uh, many of you know that the, the Fed is a, a service provider to the financial services industry when it comes to check, ACH, and, and wire transfer services. Um, so looking at the role that the Fed could play to, to actually enhance some of those services, um, again, to, to meet some of these desired outcomes. Um, moving on to, to slide uh, number three, um, we're really going to jump into what is the foundational effort here. So um, to, to really support all the different strategies that are underway, um, stakeholder engagement was really going to be the foundational basis that we were going to um, drive some of these advancements. Um, so a lot of the information and the strategies were, were really um, derived and defined by feedback from the payments industry uh, ecosystem. So all of you that have participated in many of our surveys and, and feedback and, and information that you've provided along the way uh, to, to really inform and, and to drive some of these strategies. Um, so we've been doing that through a number of different ways, certainly um, electronic means via uh, our website, fedpaymentsimprovement.org. Uh, we have a community of about 4,000 uh, organizations and individuals that participate within that community conducted a number, uh, actually up to 500 uh, presentations at both domestic and international uh, conferences and, and events. Um, so really soliciting that feedback and, and getting the message out there to the industry to um, ensure that uh, as a collective uh, payments ecosystem, we're working together to make some of these advancements. Um, if you move on to the next slide, uh, slide number four, um, in, in addition to, to the stakeholder engagement being the foundational piece of the work that's being done here, um, if you look at the two different task forces that we've kicked off, you can think of those as our cornerstones um, of that foundation to, to really move uh, and, and drive the industry uh, forward in, in making some of these advancements. Um, first one being the faster payments work that, that is underway. Um, we created a Faster Payments Task Force that um, is representative of the entire payments ecosystem. If you can see there, that group is just over 300 uh, organizations strong. Uh, the organizations that are represented on that task force um, include um, not only financial institutions, which are uh, across the spectrum from small uh, community banks and credit unions all the way up to the largest uh, financial institutions in the country, uh, but also comprised of service providers, network operators, um, consumer interest organizations, um, as, as well as actual end users, so merchants and corporates participating on the task force, really helping to create uh, uh, a, a process whereby all the ecosystem voices can be heard and uh, views expressed throughout the work that's being done. And similar in the payment security space, we've got the Secure Payments Task Force that's comprised of uh, approximately 170 organizations uh, with a similar breakdown of financial institutions, other system uh, or other system uh, industry or industry uh, participants as well as uh, end users. So um, a good cross section of the ecosystem participating in, in both these task forces. So let me move on to strategy two, uh, beginning on slide five, and this is the work that we're doing in the faster uh, payment space. And really when we talk about faster payments, what we're referring to here is a uh, process um, that essentially doesn't really exist from a payment system perspective in the U.S. marketplace. So when you think of payment systems, we're really talking about um, the ACH process, the wire process, the check system, um, whereby all financial entities uh, participate in, in that process and can exchange uh, monetary value and, and, and information. Um, but when it comes to faster or uh, what we're really talking about is real-time or immediate payments, um, similar to what's actually either uh, been launched or is in the process of being launched in about 20 countries globally, um, is a real-time payments capability. Um, now, that doesn't mean there aren't systems or processes out there that, um, that operate in a real-time payment or, or what feels like or looks like a real-time payment uh, process, but those are typically ha happening in what we refer to as closed-loop payment communities. 
um, where participants need to be a, a member or a participant within that, that closed loop community. Um, so from a payment system perspective, um, it's not something that we have here in, in the U.S. So um, looking to advance um, and, and really create a approach for implementing that type of capability um, here within the U.S. market. So if we move on to slide number six, um, just to give you a sense of, um, you know, the, the mission and the objectives of the, the Faster Payments Task Force. Um, so uh, many of you may recall that, that the group itself was brought together uh, essentially to identify and evaluate approach or approaches for implementing um, that safe, ubiquitous, and, and that's the key, you know, similar to how some of those other payment, system oper or payment systems operate, um, faster payments capability for, for the U.S. Um, and the way they're going about doing that is uh, by bringing this collective group together, which are, are essentially brought together to represent the views on the future needs for, for that type of a, a payment system. So again, having the different perspectives that are participating in the task force um, provide their input on how um, we could drive and, and, and make these advancements in the U.S. market space for, for real-time payments capabilities. Um, Next, uh, their, their second objective was to assess uh, the alternative approach or approaches for, for actual faster payments capabilities in, in the U.S., and we'll talk a little bit about what that looks like in the work that's been done to date within the task force. And then finally, and, and potentially most important, is really to address other issues that are deemed to be um, important for the successful development of this kind of a, a process for the U.S. Um, so again, like I mentioned, um, if, if folks are, are doing things in closed loop payment communities but can't um, share information across those, you know, what is needed to, to make this process look and feel like a real-time payments capability um, for the U.S.? Um, so this group has been hard at work for, for about 18 months. Um, and they've met some significant milestones and, and have been able to um, create some deliverables over the last couple of months. So let's flip over to the next slide, which is slide seven, to, to kind of give you an overview of the work that's been done to date, um, as well as what you can expect to come in the, uh, in the coming months. So first, um, and, and just to highlight this, so uh, I mentioned that the group um, was pulled together to assess different approach or approaches for implementing real-time payments capability in the U.S. Um, the goal of the group is, is not to select or choose a solution uh, to facilitate this process for the U.S. Um, the, the process has been very clear from the onset that this is really going to be a uh, market-driven um, initiative. Uh, having providers and market participants drive towards um, achieving the, these different outcomes or, or a real-time payments capability outcome. So the task force itself was, was really brought to, to help accelerate um, the implementation of those capabilities and, and again, address some of the challenges and, and opportunities that need to be addressed more at an ecosystem or a systemic level as opposed to um, something that could be handled by one or two different providers. Um, so with that in mind, um, the, the couple of uh, bullets on the left-hand side of the slide um, identify things that the task force has already completed and are available for, for your review on fedpaymentsimprovement.org. Um, but essentially, uh, the, the few things we've got listed there for you are the effectiveness criteria, uh, which was essentially a, a set of aspirational um, objectives or goals that the task force felt would be important if, if someone were to, to create and, and build a new payments capability for the U.S., what would that look like? Um, things around payment speed, payment safety and security, um, governance, laws, and regulation. How would those affect um, any type of payment system? So the task force came out with 36 criteria to help define that so that the solution providers could understand and know exactly what was expected from the marketplace um, when they were looking to create some new capabilities. Um, next was this capability showcase, and that is out on the website as well. Um, essentially, you can think of this as a virtual marketplace uh, where uh, those solution providers that had different capabilities that could be used to support real-time payments um, or support a real-time payments process within the U.S. Um, could go out there, show their wares, 
help other providers potentially um, see what uh, other capabilities exist out there that may be able to complement or, or help facilitate uh, a complete process um, uh, across the, the, the spectrum from uh, payment uh, being originated all the way up to payment being received. Um, and then next, uh, which was just uh, put out there by the task force, is final, uh, it's their final report part one. Uh, so this work is out there uh, right now, and, and the report essentially lays out um, some of the information from a background perspective, some of the work that has been done to date on the process of the task force. Um, it also lays out um, really a, a strong case of why real-time payments capabilities are needed in the U.S. marketplace. Um, so if you think about it, the, the, some of the surveys and the information that uh, we had done over the, the past few years indicated both from consumers and businesses that the payment speed um, at which the U.S. system operates from a, a traditional payment system perspective um, sometimes did not meet the needs that, that folks were looking for. So if, if folks needed to make an immediate payment, um, really you, you had the wire system, with, which is our, our quickest and, and most immediate system, but from an end-to-end -end perspective, when you look at a, a wire being created, uh, and, and verified and then being queued up by a, a bank or, or financial institution to send that wire and then being received and, and waiting for it to be posted, um, that still potentially took hours for that to happen. So it was not an immediate payment from a, a end user perspective. There was still some time lag there. So looking at ways that and, and laying out the, the information around um, why those uh, capabilities would be important to the U.S. marketplace. Um, so next, uh, the next four bullets kind of lay out the work that is currently underway and the work you can expect to see some uh, deliverables on in the coming months. Um, I mentioned the solution proposals. Um, this was a call by the task force to ask those solution providers that could potentially um, service the needs of the U.S. marketplace for real-time payments capabilities um, to submit their solutions uh, so that the task force could, could then review them, uh, provide input on how those were going. Uh, so essentially those came into the task force. Um, the task force delegated to um, a, what we call the Qualified Independent Assessment Team to essentially assess those proposals against the criteria that the task force had laid out um, earlier in the year. So taking a look at um, the criteria and saying how did each one of these solution uh, providers um, address the criteria and the, the specific um, uh, wants uh, or needs from the, the, the ecosystem to um, meet real-time payments capabilities. Um, so that was completed, um, and throughout that process, the, the task force was then uh, tasked with looking at some challenges and opportunities. Um, so after looking at the, the proposals, saying, okay, we've seen all these different various proposals, um, how do we now, from a payments ecosystem standpoint, how do we address some of the challenges that um, have now been identified from a standpoint of creating um, what would look like and feel like a real-time uh, payment system for, for the U.S. Uh, marketplace? Um, so finally, they will be pulling all that information together later, or they're actually in the midst of doing that right now, and then providing that information uh, around the mid-summer time to the marketplace. Um, so that will uh, culminate in the deliverance of uh, final report part two, which will um, include the solution proposals, um, the independent assessments, as well as the task force feedback on the, the proposals and assessments, uh, and then highlight some of the, the challenges and opportunities, all with the goal of driving towards that desired outcome of um, really creating a safe, ubiquitous um, faster payments or real-time payments capability in the U.S. marketplace. So let me talk a little bit by moving to slide number eight um, about the final report itself. So I mentioned that final report part one is out there. Certainly welcome you all to, to go out to the website, download it. it it's, it's a great read um, based on all the information um, that the task force ha has worked on to, to date about the background and how they were pulled together. Um, as well as laying out that um, uh, information or, or background on, on really why we need a real-time payments capability uh, within the U.S., so some of the benefits that both consumers 
um, as well as corporates and, and businesses can uh, derive from, from a real-time payments capability. Um, and as they're working on uh, the part two of the final report, uh, some of the objectives they're really trying to pull into the report is, is really, um, number one, to present the results of the task force um, on, on what they've seen and the work they've accomplished uh, to, to um, advance the efforts to, to bring real-time payments capabilities to the U.S. Next is going to be to propose some recommendations and approaches um, so, you know, certainly the work that the task force has got underway um, is not going to be kind of the end piece here that all of a sudden we put out this um, report and findings of the task force and then we have real-time payments capabilities across the board. No, we're going to have to do a little bit more work, um, so there's going to be some recommendations um, and different approaches to advance um, the, the ecosystem to continue to move forward to some of those capabilities. Um, next, really to champion the industry and the stakeholders to take steps to, to move forward. So again, laying out some of the benefits to, to um, the U.S. marketplace, uh, both from a consumer and, and a corporate standpoint, um, and, and really helping to um, advance the adoption and, and move towards faster payments capabilities. Um, and then finally, they're going to look to suggest some ideas to, conti to continue the momentum. So um, certainly we can't look at this as a build it and they will come type situation. We'll need to continue to work to advance those ideas um, to, to work on creating um, what would then be a, a real-time payments capability um, within the U.S. marketplace. Uh, so that deliverable uh, will be that report, part two, and, and like I mentioned, that will be uh, available and published uh, later this year. So what's next uh, on slide number nine, what you can expect coming down the pike here? Uh, certainly the task force itself is going to continue to work through some of those recommendations and next steps. Uh, we will publish that part two uh, of the report. Um, later this summer, uh, so be on the lookout for that, and certainly if you're part of our community, you'll receive the alerts uh, on when that becomes available. Um, and then next, really to identify those efforts beyond the publication of the report. So as I mentioned, um, the, the report itself is, is not um, the end of the work to be done. It's really a key milestone um, to advancing the, the work towards real-time payments capability. Um, so the task force itself will have to look to see um, what work needs to be done uh, beyond the final report really to fully achieve the desired outcome, um, which is to have those capabilities um, as a payment uh, system capability within the U.S. marketplace. So let me pause there, uh, Marissa, and see if there's any questions. Yes, Dan, we do have a couple questions. But first, I would like to remind our audience that you can submit any questions by clicking on the Ask Question button on the webinar tool. Okay, Dan, our first question is, what new use cases are emerging for retail and corporate payments, which can be monetized by adopting faster payments? Sure, Marissa. So, you know, that, that is certainly one of the interesting pieces of the work that, that is being done here, um, is identifying those use cases where um, payment speed or a faster payment capability could benefit um, the, uh, the, the payments ecosystem or, or essentially the end users. Um, so if you think about options for uh, making emergency bill pay, um, certainly if someone was looking to or, or had the potential of their lights being turned off because they, they missed a payment, forgot to make a payment, but need to make a, a real quick um, good funds payment whereby um, the sender of the payment is, is knowing exactly what they're sending and the receiver is, is also um, acknowledging or aware of what is going to be received in that payment, that it's a good payment. Um, so there's a lot of use cases um, that, that we could work on. The, the proposals um, also identified a, a number of different use cases that could benefit from real-time payments capabilities. So um, they are multiple. I, I would certainly recommend folks go out there and take a look at the final report, part one, because they do lay out some of those potential use cases um, that could benefit from a real-time payments capability. Perfect. Thank you. Next question is, is there a plan to introduce distributed ledger technology into the faster payments framework? 
Yeah, that's a good question. So one of the things that the um, task force actually looked at, and, and if you go into the, the effectiveness criteria themselves, um, the task force did not spell out um, what type of technology um, would be needed to facilitate real-time payments capability. Um, they really left that up to the solution providers or the marketplace. Um, so that's really going to be a, a marketplace-driven um, effort as to what type of um, capability or what type of technology would be used to facilitate this process. Um, that was really one of the, the, the founding or, or foundational reasons for the task force asking for those proposals to see what type of different technologies um, could potentially facilitate uh, real-time payments capability in the U.S. marketplace. Um, of course, there's some capabilities that are out there now um, so whether it's enhancing uh, existing capabilities or creating new type of um, technologies or leveraging new technologies to facilitate the process would really be up to um, the solution providers and the marketplace to drive that. But um, that will be something that uh, folks will be able to see once that final report part two is published. Uh, we'll be able to take a look at some of those different uh, proposed solutions and technologies. Great. Thanks, Dan. And we have one more question before we move on to Strategy 3. What is the timeline for rollout and implementation of faster payment solutions? Yeah, so um, the, the task force itself um, is working on kind of those recommendations that I mentioned, and, and they are reviewing, um, again, from a task force perspective, what they would like to see from a, a rollout and implementation timeline. So. Um, I will say, you know, right now there, there is no hard and fast um, deadline or, or, or date um, when folks will see what, what I would call a, a faster payment um, process. But, you know, again, like I mentioned, the, the work that's being done is really driven um, from the marketplace as opposed to other countries. So if folks are familiar with some of the efforts that have occurred in other countries like England or um, Australia, where most of those were, were government or central bank mandates and, and there were timelines associated with that. Um, in the U.S. marketplace, this is a slightly different approach where it is industry and, and marketplace driven, um, but the task force is, is very aware of that and, and working through their recommendations to, to really come up with um, targets for the industry to meet um, some of these objectives. So um, I would say things are happening in the marketplace today um, outside of the task force, um, which the, the task force was really intended to enhance and, and continue some of that momentum in the marketplace. Um, but, you know, if folks are watching some of the market developments where uh, some organizations are looking at standing up and, and implementing some real-time payments capabilities, um, those things are happening today. Um, but again, they're, they're not happening at the ecosystem level. They're, they're happening more by solution provider uh, by solution provider. So um, how does the task force draw that together to, to really create um, a functioning system that, that feels like and operates more like a payment system across the board? Great, thank you. Those are all the questions we have at this moment, so we can move on to strategy three. Thank you. Okay, sounds good. Um, so let's move on to slide number 10. Strategy three is payment security. Uh, so really the, the goal of this um, strategy is really around reducing fraud risk um, and advancing the safety, security, and resiliency of the, the payment system. Um, so we're going to really talk a little bit about today some of the top security issues that have been identified by the task force and some of the work efforts that are underway. So moving to slide number 11, uh, similar to the Faster Payments Task Force and the work being done there to support uh, the, the Faster Payments strategy, um, the, the secure folks have got kind of their own mission and objectives. Um, and some of the objectives that, that they are looking at is really when they started was to, to determine areas of focus for payment security um, and priorities for future action. So looking at um, where they thought they could make a difference in the payment security landscape. So certainly there's a lot of um, attention and, and effort being put to, to payment security, um, but given the diversity and, and the, the various perspectives that were being brought to this group, um, the group really wanted to say, how, how can we help advance um, some payment security efforts uh, really from a, a stakeholder perspective? So that, that was number one. 
Um, next was their efforts to advise the Fed on payment security uh, matters. So this is not only tied to uh, our role as, a, as an operator in some of the payment systems, but also some different work that we're doing uh, from a research perspective, um, certainly some of the work around the, the payment studies that we've done in the past. Uh, this group has been very influential on um, providing some feedback and input that, you know, while we're getting all this great information on payment activity, it would be great to enhance some of the security um, or, or payment fraud um, data so that folks can better understand what's happening in the payments ecosystem when it comes to fraud and fraud trends. So um, advising the Fed on, on various security matters. Um, and then next, and, and, and one of their key deliverables was coordinating with the Faster Payments Task Force. So I mentioned that effectiveness criteria, uh, which was really developed out of the Faster Payments Task Force, um, but the Faster Task Force actually pitched over the security criteria to the um, Secure Payments Task Force, who then had the opportunity to review that and provide their input really with a security lens. Um, and really what ended up coming out of it was about a third, 11 of the 36 uh, criteria are actually focused on payment safety and security. So you really can't think about um, improving payment speed and, and speeding up the, the process for payments without having to think about the impact and, and how to uh, mitigate and manage risk when you're doing that. So um, this secure, or the Secure Payments Task Force was um, very instrumental in, in honing in and, and focusing on some of those security criteria. So moving on to slide number 12, um, just wanted to highlight some of those areas of focus that the task force has been working on. Um, so these are uh, four areas that they, they've really been working on over the past year. The first one being uh, payment identity management, and you'll notice that each one of these groups or, or work groups um, are led by uh, industry professionals. This one specifically is led by Chris Danvers at American Airlines Federal Credit Union. Um, so the group here is really looking at um, the identification and, and adoption of payment identity management practices really to help mitigate um, existing and, ex and expected um, fraud uh, situations. Uh, so that group has kicked off uh, earlier or uh, earlier last year and, and has been doing some, some good work to advance some, some deliverables for the industry. Next was information sharing for the mitigation of payment risk and, and fraud. Um, this group is led by Glenn Ulrich from U.S. Bank. Um, so this is really about looking at some of the available uh, payments industry fraud and risk data that can be acted upon by the uh, industry. So understanding um, what's out there, what information can be shared, and how it's being shared um, to really advance payment security uh, amongst the industry. So if you think about it, um, there's, there's no... Um, winners and losers in, in, in payment security. It's something that we all benefit from if we can enhance payment security from a standpoint of the, the payments ecosystem. So looking at ways to, to advance some of the sharing of that information. Um, next is the data protection work group, which is led by Reed Lutanen from Walmart stores. Um, here is really about um, identifying uh, or the identification and adoption of different frameworks and methodologies for protecting sensitive payment um, data, um, not only at rest, but also while it's in transit. So understanding the difference between how data is being used in, in the payment process um, and ensuring that um, throughout the entire payment chain um, that that information is being protected um, in, in the best way possible. Um, and then finally, this um, one group that just kicked off late last year, uh, the Law and Regulation Coordination Group. Um, and this, this group is led by Suzanne Martindale from the Consumers Union. Um, and here, uh, this, this one's really an interesting one, and it, it kind of crosses all the other uh, work groups. But it's looking at um, opportunities whereby uh, current law and regulation is maybe not keeping up with the, the speed or the pace of change within the, the, the payments ecosystem, um, where maybe some of the incentives around um, maintaining payment safety and security are not well aligned. Um, so really taking a cross-section look at um, how uh, current law and regulation is affecting payment safety and security. Um, and if you look at the, the bottom there, going across all groups also, 
um, is really the work that's being led by Steve Mott from Better by Design, uh, which is a standards assessment team who's really looking at all the different standards um, across the, the payments ecosystem to, to really better understand um, where there are opportunities for synergy there between uh, some of the work, uh, maybe where uh, all the visibility into some of this work that's being done is not being highlighted as much as it should. So looking at um, you know, some of the standards out there um, to ensure that folks are, are managing to those um, effectively, really with the, the lens of um, ensuring payment safety and security across the board. Um, so if we move on to uh, slide number 13, um, this just kind of illustrates a little bit about one piece of work that, that is underway within the task force, and this is really tied to the life cycle um, resource uh, around um, how payments occur in the, the payments ecosystem. And what this does is it, it really helps to inform um, some of the work that the other work groups are doing. So if you take, for instance, um, the data protection work group, understanding um, what the life cycle is of each uh, different payment type, and, and keep in mind that the work that these groups are doing are not um, payment type specific. They are across all different payment types. Um, if you think about the, the, the payments ecosystem all the way from um, ACH to, to various card payments. Um, so the, the work here, the, the life cycle of the payments um, feeds into each of the work groups really to um, help inform um, and help them create a better deliverable for the industry to, to work off of. Um, a key milestone that, that the groups actually did late uh, or, or last fall um, was putting out some of this preliminary uh, information for the industry to react to. So they actually did a survey um, on some of these um, tools and, and various um, uh, work products that they were in the middle of working through and, and got uh, about 200 responses from the industry with a really strong resounding um, feedback that uh, the, the respondents were saying this is really good information and, and they had a 75% agreement that um, the solutions that the task force was working on um, would really add value to the payments industry. So um, a, a good thumbs up there that they were heading down the right path on, on bringing some of these deliverables. So moving on to uh, slide number 14, um, the accomplishments um, so far uh, on the Payment Security Task Force. Uh, so a few of them, uh, I mentioned this mapping out the life cycle of the eight payment types and, and those payment types um, as I noted, we're all the way from ACH to, to cards, uh, but it included card not present, card pin, card signature, uh, check payments, as well as contactless and, and uh, uh, wallet and, and wire payments, so uh, across the spectrum. So they were able to map that out um, to some of the existing identity management controls and, and risks and standards that are in place. Um, next was drafting some guiding principles and identifying components of data protection framework. Um, so looking to build on some existing uh, work that's been done there in the industry, but really helping to um, identify um, how the industry could, could better secure data um, throughout the, the, the payment process. Um, next was a documented list of uh, fraud and, and risk information sources, so where people can turn to uh, from an industry perspective to help better understand, um, you know, some of the fraud that's occurring, some of the mitigating steps that, that could potentially help to offset that. Um, so helping to create that resource for the industry. Um, so these uh, three key deliverables um, are going to be shared with the industry later this year. Uh, folks will have an opportunity to weigh in on those and, and provide some feedback, so certainly be on the lookout for that coming, coming soon. Um, next, I, I mentioned this earlier, uh, providing, fed, or providing feedback to the Fed. One of the key pieces that uh, the group was able to provide to us was really around um, some of the reporting uh, within our Fed payment study, so our triannual uh, payment study, really to enhance some of the, the fraud information within that report. So um, that report was released earlier this year, or, or I'm sorry, late last year. Um, so some of you had seen some of the preliminary information on that, um, and it did highlight some additional fraud um, reporting information that um, was not included in those surveys um, earlier. So 
Uh, we'll continue to look at that to see where there's opportunities to continue to enhance some of that reporting. Uh, and then finally, uh, they've reviewed, um, not only did they provide input on the effectiveness criteria, but they also provided uh, a review of the faster payment solution proposals, really with an eye on security. So how did each one of those proposals um, address the, the security criteria um, from a standpoint of their solution uh, really being uh, part of that, that process uh, for real-time payments capability. So um, the Secure Task Force was able to provide that input on those solution proposals to, to really help the providers look at it from that, that lens and perspective. So what can you expect next um, from the Secure Payments Task Force? Uh, a few things going on here, so you can expect later in 2017. Uh, first, developing a resource that outlines high-level uh, payment identity management recommendations um, and industry perspectives to support uh, payment industry participants as they evaluate their payment identity management landscape and related security plans. Um, so again, laying out that um, outline and recommendations to the industry as to how they could potentially um, improve those, those capabilities. Next, developing a framework to identify and protect sensitive payment data, uh, again, not only at rest, but also in transit, um, and, and leading toward a uh, universal security baseline for, for the payments industry to help um, identify and appropriately manage that risk um, throughout the payment process. Next, uh, you can expect to see some uh, promotion of standardized requirements for collecting uh, fraud and, uh, or uh, sorry, collecting and reporting fraud uh, data across industry segments. Um, some of the feedback that's been uh, provided along here is that we sort of have this apples to oranges uh, issue going on where there's not um, a consistent approach to reporting the information and um, providing that back to the industry. So the task force is looking to try to standardize some of that um, so that when folks see the information, they know exactly what to do with it. Um, and then finally, the, the, the group that just kicked off is really around the advancing the discussions regarding the law and regulation challenges that, that really could potentially impede the advancement of uh, payment security and safety. Um, so potentially working with policymakers and regulatory agencies um, to help uh, foster really an improved uh, payment security landscape uh, from a law and regulatory standpoint. So that's what's going on with the Secure Payments Task Force. So Marissa, let me pause there and um, see if there's any additional questions. Yes, Dan, we have two questions for you. The first one is, can you still sign up for the Faster and Secure Payments Task Forces? Sure, no, that's a great question, and the, the answer is yes. Um, as I mentioned, the, the Faster Payments Task Force is um, sort of winding down their work um, from a task force perspective where they are coming up with their final report, um, part two, which really advances um, their findings and, and lays out the next steps. So um, again, depending on what those next steps would be, um, there, there may be some opportunities for continued engagement uh, throughout the industry, but from a, a task force perspective, that is winding down, but certainly if folks want to get involved, um, that, that is certainly up to them, and we would uh, welcome their participation. Uh, but on the Secure Payments Task Force, a lot of this work is really being ramped up. I mentioned, I, I kind of outlined the, the timeline and some of the work groups that have um, stood up and some of the work they're doing. Uh, but certainly from that group perspective, uh, they would certainly welcome some additional resource to help with the, the work that's underway. So um, the answer is yes, folks can go to our website. Uh, there is still a link there to sign up to the various task forces, but they are open. Great. Um, the next question is, can you share more details highlighting who is on both the FASTER and SECURE payments task forces? Is there a list published somewhere? Yes, there actually is. So um, both task forces, the, the participants that I highlighted, the 300 and change for FASTER and the 170 for SECURE, um, those are on the website as well. Uh, there is a participant roster that you can go and, and reference, uh, list out the name of the individual uh, as well as the organization that is participating in the task force. So that is publicly available um, and, and on our website. 
Great. Thanks, Dan. We can proceed on to strategies four and five. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks, Marissa. Um, so moving on to strategy four, which I, I mentioned in, in the onset of our conversation today, uh, was really around creating a, a more efficient payment system and looking for opportunities um, whereby the existing payment process is, is getting the job done, but just maybe not as efficiently as it, it could be. So moving on to uh, slide number 17, just highlighting some of the work here that, that's being done. Um, and a lot of the work that, that is underway is really tied to um, looking at and, and finding more efficient ways for business-to-business -business payments. Um, so a couple of things that have been highlighted from either uh, Fed studies or feedback from the industry um, is that, you know, from a, a business standpoint, specifically a small business standpoint, um, making payments is is um, not as uh, fun as it could be. You know, there, there's challenges. They don't understand um, how the electronic payment system works. There's challenges with remittances and, and ensuring that payments are being made and, and credited for the, the right invoices. Um, so there was a lot of friction there and, and looking at ways to, to help foster and, and develop um, some new opportunities and enhancements um, for those communities to, to leverage some of the electronic capabilities that exist today. Um, so the first um, piece that, that's been put out there uh, for public consumption or, or to help aid uh, with some of that development is a small business toolkit. Um, so this was volume two. So th this is the second round uh, of the work that was done there. Uh, again, this has been well received. This is a toolkit that folks can um, either share with their uh, business customers, businesses can come in and access it, um, financial institutions can point their uh, customers to it, really laying out and, and helping those, um, especially small businesses that, that fully don't understand the payment process or um, maybe a little uh, afraid of, of getting into to some new payment processes, helping them to understand how the systems work and, and how they can uh, benefit uh, through some of those capabilities. Um, so that's out there. We also have the uh, Business Payments Coalition, which was formerly known as the Remittance Coalition, uh, working on a number of initiatives, uh, first being uh, this uh, potential business-to-business -business, uh, directory. So there's a steering committee that's been set up to help define some of the requirements, governance, and, and operational models. Um, to help create a uh, business payment uh, directory uh, through uh, what they're essentially calling a business payments directory association to help advance some of those capabilities. So understanding how um, folks can make uh, electronic payments um, in the, the B2B space. Uh, they're also looking at um, some various alternatives towards uh, e-invoicing and, and some standards there. Uh, to, to help facilitate that process and, and move it forward. Um, so you've got um, so a number of different efforts underway in the, the B2B space to help advance um, electronic payments um, within those organizations, really with, with the goal of creating a, a more efficient payment process for, for those users. So if we move on to um, slide 18, uh, Another piece of, of uh, the efficiency, efficiency strategy is really tied to um, the work being done uh, primarily from a global standpoint, but certainly has a big impact um, for the U.S. marketplace, is looking at the, the potential of migrating to ISO 2022, uh, the, the international global uh, messaging standard uh, for payments. So this has really moved into um, the marketplace um, globally in, in a number of countries uh, quickly becoming the, the standard for uh, payment messaging um, across the globe. So looking at how we potentially integrate and, and migrate um, those capabilities here within the U.S. So you've got our two primary electronic payment channels, um, the wire transfer system and the ACH system. Uh, so certainly from a high value or wire perspective, uh, a little bit more work has been done there in, in kind of laying out um, what the future looks like from an ISO 2022 standpoint. And looking forward, um, there will be a more detailed plan coming out um, this fall as well as educational efforts around how the U.S. is going to move forward 
in migrating to that um, standard from a, a high value uh, capability. Uh, on the ACH front, uh, a little bit um, more reliant on, on education right now to, to better understand some partnership work that we've been doing with NACHA uh, to help uh, map ISO 20022 to the ACH uh, format. Uh, also understanding some different use cases and, and benefits as far as how these different payment types could benefit um, from uh, leveraging a, a global and, and international uh, payments messaging standard. Um, certainly this would help not only from an information standpoint, the, the, the details and, and strong remittance and data information that could flow uh, with those payments, uh, but also helping to, to create less friction when folks are making payments globally or internationally. Um, by reducing some of the need to translate or, or move those payments across different uh, formats. Uh, so more work to be done there, but uh, this is exciting work as um, certainly you can imagine a, a lot of work in a big lift to, to be able to make some of these changes. Uh, so it's not something that would happen overnight, but laying out that path, um, creating awareness within the marketplace on some of these changes that are coming. Um, and really helping to, to foster and, and move the industry forward um, with some of the uh, different messaging standards tied to ISO 20022. Um, so that's some of the work that's being done in the efficiency uh, strategy. So I'll move on quickly here to the Federal Reserve Financial Services um, enhancements. Uh, so jumping over to slide number 20, uh, this really is the the work uh, from the Fed as a service provider or, or operator uh, within the payment space. So certainly looking at um, improvements that, that we can make uh, for the industry to leverage uh, in our services, uh, certainly all tied to enhancing payment speed, safety, and efficiency uh, around the various services that we provide. Um, I'm going to assume that most of you know we've already implemented uh, the NACHA same day uh, rule changes to afford for same-day ACH, um, which is in place now with phase one. We'll certainly be looking forward to, to phase two as that continues to roll out, um, but certainly that was an improvement in speed. Um, that, that is a, an enhancement for the ACH system, um, but just to draw the distinction between that and the faster payments work, um, which is really tied to more of an immediate um, or instant payment type, um, which is not uh, tied to the ACH or, um, or, or not specific to the, the batch process that, that the ACH implements today. Um, next is expanding some of our risk management services. Uh, so there's a number of different services that the, profet, or that the Fed provides back to uh, the financial services or financial institution community. Uh, enhancements to those services include uh, enhancements to the Fed Payments Reporter uh, service that we provide um, to help uh, organizations or institutions better understand and manage some of their risk um, in, in, in the payments process, uh, certainly the enhancements to, to the Fed ACH system, um, as well as enhancements to the Fed Transaction Analyzer, giving folks um, more visibility into the payments that are being made and, and how to manage and, and mitigate potential risk in, in those services. Um, so education as well is, is a cornerstone, so making sure that the, the financial services industry um, is well up to speed on, on the different efforts and, and work that's underway, um, specifically tied to security efforts, um, ensuring that we are maintaining the security and the safety and resiliency of the, the payment process, um, really for all participants within that, that payments ecosystem. Um, so a lot of good work being done there from a um, Fed payments uh, or a Fed service provider perspective. Um, those services will continue to be looked at um, and with feedback from the industry looking at how we continue to um, enhance those services uh, really from, from a standpoint of all the desired outcomes, which is um, looking at improved payment speed, safety, and, and security. So let me pause there, um, Marissa. That was really the, the uh, bulk of the prepared remarks and see if we have any other further questions that, that folks may have. Yes, we have a couple questions that just came in before we close out the webinar. The first question is, 
To what extent will the ACH system handle the multilateral settlement before relying on the Fed ultimate net settlement? Okay, so that, that's an interesting question, and um, uh, to make sure I've got it right, I don't know if this was tied to um, tied to the faster payment um, solutions that, that were coming through and some of the settlement efforts there, but um, that that settle, settlement is certainly a key piece of, of what needs to occur in the, the payment process, and from a um, faster payments perspective or from the proposal perspective, uh, the solution providers were um, asked to uh, indicate how they were going to ha handle settlement and, and what was needed um, from a settlement standpoint. So um, certainly if folks were looking to leverage the ACH system for settlement, um, that, that would be up to them. It's, it's up to the solution providers. Um, but if there was needs for enhancements in settlement capabilities, certainly the Fed offers a settlement service today, a net settlement service. Um, that, that essentially operates um, uh, throughout the, the, the banking day and, and into, well, essentially Fed wire uh, operating hours. Um, but if there needs to be enhancements there, that would be something that the industry could, um, you know, provide feedback on, on what might be needed in, in that instance. Okay, thank you, Dan. Is part of the goal to address a safe, fast, ubiquitous for all use cases, P2P, P2B, B2B, B2P? That is a great question. And um, one of the aspects of this solution proposal process, uh, uh, all, all task force members interested in submitting solution proposals were provided a template you know, a proposal template to use. And that template specifically asks the proposer to describe which use cases their solution intended to serve or, or was primarily targeting. And I will say, you know, without divulging any details of the solutions, that um, there was a lot of diversity. Um, and I think even with what we see in the marketplace today, there are definitely solutions that are designed to very effectively serve a particular use case. Um, and there are others that, you know, are, are broader and cross many use cases. And we, we saw that exact same kind of diversity in the solution proposals that came forward from the task force. So I, I don't know, um, you know, the, the task force itself did not articulate a goal that said we would have a solution that served all use cases. Um, and I think from, you know, the dis what they've seen in proposals and the discussion they've had about interoperability, you know, I'm sensing a, a, a belief by the task force that you could have many solutions um, working together that are interoperable that potentially, you know, serve different needs and different pieces of the market. The question is, can I still sign up to the Secure Payments Task Force? Oh, I love that question. Um, you know, as I noted, the Faster Payments Task Force is kind of wrapping up their work in the next few months, and so I kind of highlighted that the opportunity there might be to jump in quickly on the heels of their final report and get involved in the next phase of work. But Secure Payments Task Force, they are still in the trenches, as you can, can ascertain from my description. There's a lot of work going on and a lot of work yet to do, and so we very much uh, welcome additional participants. And you can, if you go to fedpaymentsimprovement.org, under the Secure tab in the navigation, uh, you can get to the instructions for how to sign up for the Secure Payments Task Force. So um, would love to have you join. Great. Thank you, Penny. In regards to the Faster Payments Task Force efforts, if the intent is not to make decisions on a, res on a solution, how or who will implement the solution? Great question. Um, so our, our, the entire process is really um, acknowledges and has been designed to um, provide insights uh, and allow the marketplace to innovate. Um, 
you know, we, we already see, depending on how you, you know, define faster payments, uh, lots of solutions in recent years have come to market focused on faster clearing, um, going back to things like uh, PayNet, um, you know, you've got Zelle that's come out recently, the clearinghouse is developing a solution, you know, the card network certainly have been expanding the use cases they're addressing and the speed of payments. Um, and we have lots of other, you know, solutions that have come forward through this task force process. So the vision is that, you know, the market will innovate um, and, and is motivated to deliver some of these capabilities. And so the task force is, you know, bringing a lens of what do we want and expect out of these solutions that's what's defined in the criteria. And then their view about how some of the solutions that have come through their process, how they match up um, to those criteria. So it's providing information um, to, to inform marketplace and stakeholder you know, choices and decisions. Perfect. Thank you, Connie. I know that we're running out of time, but one last quick question. Is there a fixed date for the ISO format to be mandated for ACH? Um, there is not. As I noted, there's been a lot of um, discussion and analysis going on to think about whether there's a need to migrate to really change the ACH format or as an alternative to simply integrate ISO into components so that it, it's very seamlessly interoperable, the ACH format and, and systems that use the ISO format, without wholesale changing the ACH format. And some of that consideration is driven by the fact that the ACH ecosystem is really complex um, and reaches into lots and lots of systems all the way down to end user businesses. And so a wholesale migration to a new format would be um, very complex. So they're debating whether we can really achieve the benefits and interoperability with ISO 20022 systems without a wholesale change to the format. So, um, so, so there hasn't been a decision that we will necessarily change, much less a um, you know, a, a, a date, uh, a deadline by which we would migrate. Um, but I expect over the course of 2017 that uh, roadmap and vision to become clearer and you can expect communications in the future on, on the path. Great. Thank you, Connie. Those are all the questions that we have at this time. And since we're a couple minutes over the hour, I will turn to slide 21 for closing. Great, thank you. Um, I would just, in closing, say first, you know, we, we so appreciate the interest um, there. I, I think we had 600 folks sign up for this, and, and we're just thrilled that there are that many folks who are vested in payment system improvement and following these activities, and certainly the participation across all of these collaborative efforts I talked about um, is really incredible. Um, and it is driving results, as hopefully you can see from all of the accomplishments and work that I described today. Another question. Regarding ISO 2022, does the Fed expect to take a more directive approach to promote the mitigation? The migration. Oh, excuse me, the migration. Migration, okay. Yeah, I was going to say mitigation. Um, so, yeah, no, that, that's a good question, too. So um, this, and, and there's a lot more uh, information on this, and I would point folks to fedpaymentsimprovement.org where there's a whole uh, number of resources and information around this. And um, this has really been a collaborative industry effort uh, working through the various players, whether it's uh, not just SWIFT, the clearinghouse, all the folks that um, are participants and, and operators in the process uh, to facilitate these payments that um, may potentially need to uh, migrate. So it's been a collaborative effort to, to work with the industry. So I would say um, really, it's, it's something that needs to be done at the ecosystem level to ensure that uh, folks are prepared um, as well as have a good plan. Um, and I mentioned that, you know, at least for the high-value payments, um, more information will be coming out this fall um, with a specific plan and approach to 
uh, testing, implementation timelines, and guidelines for uh, ISO 20022. So uh, we are committed to, to ensuring and, and keeping the industry up to date on the efforts there. Great. Thank you, Dan. So since we are um, running out of time, it looks like those are the questions we have for today, but I would like to proceed on to slide 22 to inform participants on how they can stay engaged. Okay, sounds good. So uh, appreciate uh, everyone's time and uh, attention today. Uh, it was great to give you the update, but if you do have uh, further interest in, in the work at hand and want to stay informed, uh, you can actually sign up at fedpaymentsimprovement.org uh, and you'll receive information on the work that the task forces have got underway as far as the other initiatives uh, underway. You can also follow us on Twitter uh, as well as YouTube to uh, continue to get information. So appreciate your time and attention uh, and look forward to uh, continuing to work with you all as part of that payments ecosystem to advance um, and, and drive towards some of the desired outcomes that were laid in the laid out in the strategies paper uh, in 2015. So